Hi, I'm Mark from Split Second, and today we're going to go in the lab with the TA2-100 TAC adapter. This is used to generate a true TAC signal on just about any engine. And in the old days, we used to have distributors, and by just the way they worked, they created a true TAC signal. In other words, a pulse for every ignition event of the engine. Modern engines tend to have either a separate ignition module or coil-on plug, and the pulse rates are at the rate of a one-cylinder engine, not the number of cylinders of the engine. This becomes a problem when you're fitting an aftermarket tack or shift light to an engine. And another application where this comes in is where we have additional injectors. On a lot of turbo and supercharger kits, we use supplemental additional injectors to provide the extra fuel and boost. And it's really handy to fire those additional injectors at the true tack rate. This ensures even fuel distribution among cylinders. So a little background here. In the old days where we had a distributor, say a four-cylinder engine, we had uh, a cap that looked like this with the four plug wires and there's a shaft that rotates one time for each cam revolution. So for each cam revolution of the engine, there's four pulses. And inside the distributor, there are contacts, the, that, the points that fire the ignition coil. And they might do something like this. So you have starting one, two, three, four, start over. That's one full engine cycle, four pulses per engine cycle. Of course, on a modern engine, we have coil on plug, it's triggered, and then nothing until we come all the way around again. So we have one cylinder rate signals to work with on modern engines, but we want to get back to this true tech rate for things like tachometer, shift lights, and additional injector control. So if we take this signal and input it to the TA2, and tell it to multiply by four, well, it'll output a signal like this. And what comes in as a one cylinder rate signal gets bumped up by a factor of four to a four cylinder rate. So inside the device, if you take the cover off, you'll find some dip switches. And we can use this little simple binary uh, code here to tell us how to set these switches. And uh, if I, my memory serves, this is our little sequence. And um, we have a multiply by one, two, three, four, six, eight, ten, or twelve cylinders. So those three first dip switches in the device tells it what the multiply factor is. And there's another little switch, uh, switch four, that tells it to be 12 volts or 5 volts on the pulses. So it will produce output pulses that are either 0 to 5 or 0 to 12 based on this fourth switch position. So that's pretty much a quick overview. Let's now go in the lab and see how it works. Before we can connect the TAC adapter, we have to determine what kind of input we're going to be using. So I'm going to take a few minutes and go through the different types of signals we could encounter on an engine. I'll turn on the generator and I am producing these 0 to 5 volt pulses here. And these are the kinds of signals you would see if you have a buffered coil. A coil that has a driver built into it. A lot of domestic cars uh, on modern engines use these sorts of coils with this kind of trigger signal. And if I put my meter on the uh, hertz scale, and if you're lucky, you're going to have a hertz scale in your voltmeter, and I see 6.7 hertz. On a one-cylinder rate uh, signal at idle, in other words, around 800 RPM, you're going to see 6.7 hertz. And the range is going to go as high as 67 hertz at 8,000 RPM. So, to kind of characterize a signal like this, it's really handy if you have a meter with a hertz scale. On the DC voltage scale, you'll see a little instability because it's, it's averaging this out to an equivalent DC level, but it can't average it perfectly because it's such a low frequency. So it's unstable, it's around 0.7 volts, 
And you can also go to the AC scale and see something around one volt AC. And that's typical of what you'll see with one of these kinds of signals on an engine. So another kind of signal that we might encounter would be a coil primary. I have an ignition coil here and I'll give it power. And so we're pulsing the ignition coil at the same rate we would have it idle on a one cylinder uh, rate. And here are the ignition pulses. Let's uh, magnify things a little bit. And we will see the classic coil primary waveform. Starts off at battery voltage. We energize the coil by pulling its primary to ground. And we hold it at ground during the dwell period. We release the coil and it produces a very high voltage spike. And then it follows the spark line and rings its way back to battery voltage. And if we put our meter on the Hertz scale and measure that, well, it's way off. It's not able to accurately measure that because it's such a complex waveform with spikes and ringing and all that sort of thing. If we put it on DC volts, we see uh, a filtered DC voltage is a little noisy because it has pulses and it's a little bit less than battery voltage. We're at 13.7 and our battery voltage is 13.8 and we can see some AC uh, waveforms here. So let's say you're dealing with a coil. You don't know if it's a buffered or unbuffered coil. Well, if you put your meter on DC volts and you look at the primary, the thing that's wiggling, and if it's up near battery, well, it's, it's an unbuffered coil and you have to deal with that sort of noisy, ugly signal. Okay, we'll turn this off. And the other kind of signal you might deal with is an injector. So we can turn on this fuel injector thusly, and I can put my scope on that signal. And now we see an injector pulse, and it's also at battery when the injector is off. We pull the low side of the injector coil to ground to turn it on. And then this is the on time or pulse width of the uh, uh, fuel injection. When it's turned off, it also spikes. In this case, there's a clamp at about 35 volts and it tails back off to battery voltage. Well, it turns out that we can get a pretty good um, frequency measurement putting our meter on Hertz. We get that nice 6.7 Hertz on DC. It's going to average it close to battery again, just a little bit less than battery voltage. And uh, we're going to see AC voltage as well. So these DC and AC and Hertz measurements on your meter will help you figure out uh, what kind of a signal uh, you're going to deal with. And with the TAC adapter, you've got two choices uh, on the input. You've got a yellow wire and that's for noisy, you know, signals with high voltage spikes like ignition coil primaries. And then you've got this tan wire, which is more for logic type inputs. So let's demonstrate how to connect it if you have uh, a, an ignition coil primary. So I'm gonna hook my black wire to ground, red wire to power, and my oscilloscope goes to gray. And I'm gonna connect this uh, yellow wire up to my coil primary and then we will energize this coil and get it going and uh, let's see what we have for an output and uh, turn this back down so we can sort of see everything uh, all at the same time and here we go i'll uh, freeze this Turn off my input and we can see that we have uh, this input period uh, that's the trigger but it's driving this coil we have making that ugly coil waveform we're picking that up on the uh, yellow wire input to the tack adapter and then during one period on the input we have six pulses coming out indicating that we are doing a uh, multiply by six inside the tack adapter that's it for now Thanks for watching.